What's up guys, it's Blaze from Funbox here, and before we continue with the hurt and the damage dealing for this section, I just want to slip in uh, the broadcast system into this section here. Um, I, think, I think that if we deal with this sooner rather than later, we'll be able to get rid of any potential bugs that might come up in our system. Uh, the other reason being that a game like this or a combat system like a turn-based game should be as decoupled as possible, as much as possible. What I mean by that is that a single object should only be concerned with that one object and nothing else. And so by using the broadcast system that's now available to us in GMS, we can do just that. But uh, you can skip this video if you want, but I think that there are a lot of benefits to using the broadcast system. So I'm, I just figured we'd slip this in here. Uh, and so with that, let's get started with this tutorial. The first thing that we're going to do is add a broadcast message to our sequence. So naturally we're working with the attack sequence first and I had my playhead at the right position. So here at uh, frame 65 or wherever you want to place a broadcast message, what we're going to do is we're going to write up the name or a string of the message we want to send. I'm going to call mine attack sent um, just because it makes sense. It's at the end of the animation and well, it just makes sense to call it attack sent. All right, so they've finished their turn. They've, they've done all their calculations, at least, you know, for now, they've done all their calculations and they're finished with their turn. What happens next? Well, what we want to do is we want to replace this line of code here with a local variable instead. Before we get into that though, let's set up our broadcast listener. The way we do that is by going to the add event into other and right at the bottom here, we have broadcast message. Let me expand this and drag this over so that all of our manager code is in the one tab. Now what we're going to do here, I'm just going to paste it, but uh, essentially our events are stored in a DS map. And we don't have to uh, manually delete this data structure here. It's, it's built into the system as far as I can tell. Um, you should look into that. But what we're looking for specifically in this switch statement here is the type of message. Now keep in mind that uh, the messages are strings, meaning that if our spelling or if our capitalization is off, then it's going to ignore that message. Let me show you by writing up an example here. So let's write case. And the message that we're listening for is attack sent, right? And let me just write that in here, attack sent. And of course, because it's a case, uh, it's a switch statement, we need a break statement right there at the end. So for now, let's try writing up a debug message. And I'm just gonna say attack was sent. Perfect. All right, let's try running our code now. Keeping in mind that the case here, our case string is the exact same spelling. And so what we should expect is in the output window, it should say attack was sent whenever we click the mouse or rather when the animation, the attack animation finishes. And you can see there that it's come up a couple of times now. So that's good. Let's do one thing. Let's make one change. So let's say you misspell your message that you're listening for. Let's try playing the game again. And you can see now that even though our system works because we haven't made any big changes yet, nothing's coming up in our output window, All right? So that's something that you need to be very uh, diligent with is the spelling and capitalization of your messages. All right, so we're not going to use it just to debug. We are actually going to create a new, uh, new variable and for this, rather than having this line where we reference the selected unit, it does work. It does work, but uh, I want us to use the tools that are given to us by YoYo -Yo Games, by that we have here 
in Game Maker Studio. So for us, what we're going to do, do is um, we, we're going to add a new variable and I'm going to call it selected finished and we'll default it to false, right? Because naturally the unit, the selected unit is not going to have finished their turn yet. So now instead of checking for this, we're going to just replace it with that there, right? Just like that. So what we're doing is we're becoming less reliant on this global global variable. Because strictly speaking, what we should be doing is we should be telling, well, this should only hold an ID, right? And we should only reference it when we need to. That's not to say that what we had before won't isn't correct, isn't the right thing to do. It is. It's um it's fine. It's perfectly fine to do that. But like I said, I want us to use some of the tools that are available to us here in GMS, right? And one of those tools is the broadcast system. And naturally here for attack sent, we're going to take selected finished and we're going to set it to true here. Going back to the step event, what I'm thinking now is here at check finish, actually no, at the end of the turn, we are going to go selected finished equals false. We're going to reset this Boolean that the manager has back to false here. Okay, so let's try playing our game now and hopefully nothing has changed, okay? So here you can see that everything seems to be working just fine, which is good. <laughs> um, right, nothing, nothing's changed, right? So what, what's the difference between using what we had before and using a broadcast message now? Good question. Let's say we want to take this, right? We can, this, this bit is completely unscripted. Not that I write scripts at all, but Let's say we want our units to react in, to a character's, a, another unit uh, sending an attack, right? So let's say for example here, in our parent unit event, we paste all of this code in. But let's say for our, hmm, let's say we want, like I said before, we want our units to you know, react to, one unit sending an attack over. I don't think I have a team variable yet. No, I don't. So let's just keep it simple. What we're going to do is we're going to write if uh, global dot selected is not the same as this unit. So Basically everything what we want to do is every other unit except for the current selected unit is going to react to an attack this message being sent through. So in this case what we're going to do is global.selected unit is going to be I don't know let's just show a debug message uh, string id plus um Hmm. All right, let's just say that that happens, okay? <laughs> let's just say that that happens and let's try playing our game. And if we click, all right, everybody, except for uh, unit six, just to avoid saying all those zeros, everybody else reacted, right? So that's that's something that you can use to add a little bit of flair to your game is by having a broadcast message, you can have units or you can have other objects react to a certain object in a specific way. I'm just giving you guys the very basic, very, very basic version of it in as simple form as possible. Let's add a little bit to this code because it's, it's, it's leading somewhere, I think. So let's go if we already know that the guy that's attacking, we don't want them to react to their own attack. So let's try adding in another variable, this time a local one, random number. 
and we're going to set that to random one. So, so it's, yeah, one out of 100, um, or rather percentage. And so if a uh, random number is less than 0 point, let's say two, then we are going to show that message. Let's try playing this code now or playing the game now and see what pops up. Okay, nothing, still nothing, still nothing. Okay, well, that's fine. This, this bit is completely, uh, actually, you know what, let's try. Let's try increasing that, no, that number. This part is completely unscripted, but you can see that now, there you go. Some characters are now saying stuff, which is fine. Uh, but now you can see that we can add a little bit of flair to our game by using broadcast um, messages, All right? So I'm gonna leave it at that. The next section, we will actually send information to and from units to deal damage to each other. So stick around for that. Anyway, guys, I'm going to try and keep these uploads coming frequently or as frequently as possible. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.